powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Tuesday. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Russ Riesinger. Tonight, a closer look at the safety in Billings Parks. Just days after three teenagers were involved in a shooting in Pioneer Park, we talk with local law enforcement to find out what's being done for safety. Now, Billings Police have created a position to help keep the park safe, and they say it's been making a difference. Chief Zoe Zandora met up with the man in charge of that park patrol to learn more. In 2017, the Billings Police Department created the Billings Police Park Officer position, a position funded out of the Parks Department budget from city funding. Officer Nicholas Lamb, he's been the Billings Police Park Officer from day one. To keep the parks safe um, and be here mostly primarily in the morning hours to help with the kid camps, you know, clear out a little bit of the uh, homeless populations who've been sleeping in the, these areas or these parks in the morning and patrolling the parks during daytime hours. In the past few years, the amount of homeless in Billings has been an issue in primarily the North, South and Dealer Park areas. I'm not sure if some of that had to do with the construction. It was a little harder to access in some of those nooks and crannies up in that area, but kind of in the downtown central area, the parks that border that area were having probably the most issues. Officer Lamb stays busy with over 100 parks to patrol in the Billings area. And one of the most common problems he says he comes across is people drinking in the parks. We have been able to really, you know, last summer kind of hammer down on some people with lots of citations and tickets and let them know you can't drink in the parks, you can't be here after hours, and we were able to get that cleaned up. From 2017 and really from the inception of the park officer position to present time, the city has seen a 33% reduction in calls to the parks. I think it has to do with my position a little bit, but I also a big part of my position has been trying to preach to the public and the number of the task forces around town that it takes a community to take ownership of a park. The police can only do so much in what we can and can't police, but it takes the community to be out in the parks and enjoying them. And it keeps a lot of the other crime and kind of issues away. In Billings, Zoe Zandora, MTN News. Officer Lamb says do not hesitate if you see something suspicious to call a non-emergency line or if in danger, call 911 because it's better to be safe. Well, a Montana family is accusing the FBI of failing to properly investigate the death of a Crow tribal member. A hearing for that case today in federal court in Helena. The family of Stephen Bear Crane claims the FBI discriminated because he was a Native American. In 2005, Bear Crane was shot and killed at a ranch on the Crow Reservation. A grand jury declined to prosecute the man who shot him, saying the shooting was in self-defense. Bear Crane's family argues investigators did not examine evidence well enough. That was how the case started and the investigation proceeded um, to an inevitable conclusion when you start with the stereotype that um, Stephen Bear Crane was responsible for his own death. It's important that someone recognize that this is happening and until people recognize what's happening on reservations to Native Americans, nothing's going to change. But well, the judge did not make a decision on the case during today's hearing. Well, today, a recently solved Yellowstone County cold case is the subject of a true crime segment on national TV. Q2 Samantha Sullivan shares why Dr. Oz was interested in the case of Linda and Clifford Bernhardt. Sammy? Russ and Janelle, the case caught the attention of the Dr. Oz show because of its use of new DNA technology to solve a decades-old cold case. The segment recapped the case of the young couple who was murdered in their Heights home and described how it wasn't until 2004 when the Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office decided to test old evidence for DNA that there was finally a break. But back in 2004, there was no match for that DNA in the CODIS system. But then you fast forward 15 years when genealogy testing was becoming increasingly more popular and they were finally able to identify the killer as one of Linda's co-workers. Sheriff Mike Linder joined the show to explain the importance of finally having those answers. How do you think these results will help your community heal from something I knew that had scarred you for, for so many years? You know, I th think this will help a lot. This is going to send a message to others that if they have information about these types of cases, they need to come forward, regardless of how small it might be, because you can see just uh, we don't, don't give up on these cases and we'll continue to investigate them just as long as we possibly can. Now, as you may recall, earlier this year, Sheriff Linder had announced that they finally had a suspect in that double murder. His name was Cecil Caldwell, and he died back in 2003. 
Well, U.S. Senator John Tester was in Helena today hosting an open town hall meeting with members of the public. MTN's Mike Dennison was there as Tester took on all the tough questions face to face. At the Helena College campus, Senator Tester spent an hour taking questions from the audience and the crisis at the southern border came up almost immediately. There are children who are in camps and are hungry and they're without their moms and dads and they're desperately poor and hungry and filthy. What are you doing and what are your staff doing about this? Tester said more aid is needed for Central American countries, which are the source of many refugees at the border. But first, he wants more information from the Trump administration. They assure us that they're moving the kids out and that the average stay is only like two weeks, 21 days. But I'm not sure I believe them. <clears throat> and oh, so, they need to be with their parents. Right. And, oh, absolutely. Yeah. They need to be reunited as a starting point. And, and uh, because that's not what we're about as a country. But when an audience member said open borders would solve the problem, Tester disagreed. I just do not believe that. So that would be a totally different way to go that I would not support. I'll just tell you, I would not support that. In response to a question about building needed infrastructure in the country, Tester said the Republican tax cut bill of 2017 has made it difficult to afford. The truth is the tax bill that we passed put us in a situation of structural imbalance that is not going to allow us to do things that we need to do, like make college more affordable, like build infrastructure. By the way, those two things are what drives the economy in the 21st century. And as for college affordability, Tester called it vitally important, but said Congress is doing next to nothing to address that issue or student debt. You can't have kids coming out of school with 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars in debt. Um, and by the way, the folks that are creditors with the damn credit cards that are getting a hold of these kids and saying, go ahead and ring up the bill, pay me later, well, I'll be putting those folks in jail. <laughs> Tester also bemoaned GOP control of the U.S. Senate, saying Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is keeping vital issues off the floor. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. A Montana's congressional delegation is in state this week while Congress takes its 4th of July break. Well, on the weather scene tonight, Rob Griggs had some words with Mother Nature <laughs> earlier, so she eased up a little yeah, bit he's tonight. A powerful guy. I, did, I, said, I, I said, I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> sorry, I'll never do it again. We even brought in Ed McIntosh to try to get her to calm down a little bit, and it worked. It worked, yeah. Nice we, work. we didn't have the intense weather we thought we would have. We certainly had some strong thunderstorms and even started off the afternoon with a tornado warning down near Warland, Wyoming. No confirmation of a tornado touching down, but boy, that got our attention. You can see right now across the region, still quite a few showers, but nothing anywhere near strong or severe. A couple of thunder cells extending all the way there from Kalispell down toward the uh, southeastern corner of the state. If you're wondering what happens tomorrow, well, we do have a chance for some showers and thunderstorms, but we're not calling them strong or severe at this point. 72 will be the high after tonight. We'll start to see those showers and thunderstorms diminish. We're going to drop down to 57 overnight. So the complete statewide Q2 storm tracker forecast in mere moments. Russ, Janelle. All right, thanks so much. An early morning wake up call for some Billings residents as firefighters showed up to douse a small blaze. Now crews evacuated tenants from this apartment complex at 2708 2nd Avenue South around 3 o'clock this morning. Deputy Fire Marshal Jamie Fender says the combustibles left on the furnace sparked that blaze and caused about $50,000 damage. And new details tonight on what led to an overnight explosion that blew a Missoula trailer home right off its frame. Fire investigators say a fire started in the oven, then it ignited butane, which caused that blast. A neighbor says she woke up to the loud sound, then banging at her door, and says it looked like the man's hands had melted off in that explosion. Authorities are now investigating. A decorated Navy SEAL cleared today of murder charges. Eddie Gallagher found not guilty on seven of eight charges he faced. Prosecutors accused him of killing a wounded ISIS prisoner in Iraq two years ago and opening fire on civilians. However, jurors found him guilty on only one charge, and that was posing for a photo next to the prisoner's dead body. Gallagher's trial was turned upside down when a prosecution witness unexpectedly testified that he, not Gallagher, killed the ISIS member. The USS Billings is back on the move again after it struck another ship docked in Montreal, Canada. In that Canada. It, yeah, that incident happening on June 21st, and 10 days later, the littoral combat ship continued its journey on Monday morning. Now, the cause of the incident is still under investigation, but the ship is still set to be commissioned in Key West next month. Well, a special night at Dealer Park as the Billings Mustangs took on the Great Falls Voyagers, but 
all the excitement wasn't on the field. Yeah, the Mustangs had some furry friends in the stands to cheer them on tonight. Q2's Mitch Leggy takes us there. For one night only, Hi. Dealer Park has gone to the dogs. <laughs> well, just enjoying the weather, um, having a Mustangs game, and just interacting with other dogs, and you know, realizing that's a nice uh, community event that we have here going. So, Pups in the Park Night is sponsored by Billings Hardware. They made sure that every pup that entered the gate got a goodie bag filled with toys and snacks. Dog owners say it's nice to have a night at the ballpark that's all for them. He's happy to get out and, and do stuff with me. It's hard to find stuff that you can bring your dogs to. Well, now I feel like so it's, it's nice to not come home and leave him to go do something, but grab him and take him with. This is the second year that Dealer Park has hosted Pups in the Park. Dogs in the ballpark? What's better than that? Well, I can tell you, it's all for a good cause. Proceeds from the $3 dog admission are being donated back to the Yellowstone Valley Animal Shelter. A fitting cause to be sure, but there's one catch. In order to get in the gate, your dog has to be a Mustangs fan. Are your dogs Mustangs fans? <laughs> of course they are. I mean, I mean these Mika. dogs were born and raised in Billings. What other choice they got? Well, yeah, exactly. It's the only way to go. So that's how we go roll. Stings. Yeah, go Mustangs. No problems here. From Dealer Park in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. Pretty fun. Thanks, Mitch. And Mitch tells us about 100 dogs took in tonight's ball game. All right, coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news, amidst the mountain faces and trees in the glacier, you'll find bright, iconic red. A look into the longtime career of a red jammer driver. That's coming up next. Plus, Los Angeles teammates playing for one of their own tonight, the latest on the death of pitcher Tyler Skaggs. And later in sports, Cowboy Christmas kicks off in Red Lodge and Livingston. Highlights from both rodeos on the way. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.